uh, to everyone here throughout this process. Um, you can Google us, we're landmarkwest.org. My name is Kate Wood. You can call me anytime with any question that you have. Um, and I just say that not because I have greater expertise than the Landmarks Commission, but we are there in our office uh, five days a week, at least 10 hours a day, and always ready to take your questions and phone calls. Um, and I would just like to ask the commission, I think it would be helpful to the community if, uh, if we could be provided with a list of the buildings that have been considered officially for landmark designation in the past, the sort of heard but not designated areas that are included in this proposed district, as well as a list of buildings for which you have received nominations for right. landmark designation, because those often come from the community and it might help to show the level of support that has existed. The website of the commission tomorrow will have the map and will indicate, we'll have to provide that information. Jerry, you want to add something? You wanted to follow up on another question? Yes. Jerry Kane is uh, an old uh, Albany hand, known to many people in this room, and known to me in Albany 35 years ago. Jerry, Thanks. quickly. Thank you very much. So, uh, I think the question before was, what are potential grounds you will entertain as valid grounds for keeping the building out, whether it measures up, whether it reaches, reaches the standards of uh, inclusion in terms of its historical importance, its architectural importance, its cultural importance, and if all those factors are weighed in determination whether or not it's a community building and it does or does not belong in an historic district. No, no specific criteria. Just the, the aesthetic, the, the commission makes those decisions based on the, those, those touchstones. There's a new federal lead paint law. The, um, if, if you have an exterior, I'm a landlord, I'm a managing agent, I represent landlords who have rent stabilized apartments. If you have, uh, if a tenant doesn't report an exterior leak and they call HPD, HPD now issues violations. They get them to you and they give you roughly 20 days by the time you get them to correct them. If, if, a, if the, in order to correct the violation, you have to repair something exterior, like a lintel, which requires uh, a staff level permit. The, the penalties, if you fail to uh, correct this within the 20 days they give you, it's $250 a day, up to $10,000. They typically give you not one, but seven, eight, nine for this wall, that wall, that ceiling. Oh, that right, HPD. 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 How we you will never stand in the way of taking those steps that you've just described in order to, most importantly, cure the, the health hazard, but also avoid the kinds of uh, penalties that you're referring to. We have interaction and uh, discussion with the relevant city agencies once they're, once a building under our jurisdiction and theirs is brought before them, and we will intervene to be certain that that does not happen. And I believe we even, we have a protocol in process in place now that ensures that won't happen. Okay, your, your lawyer, your lawyer who finally called me back after roughly a month of leaving the messages, I know he was on vacation or something, was not aware of any sort of protocol of that kind and said that he had never encountered this issue before, well, so I'm very surprised to hear. He has never encountered, I think what he, and I talked to him about this, what he described to you is that we have never had, we have never encountered a situation where the kinds of draconian consequences that you described have occurred. So what, what, is, what, is, what is the protocol? The protocol is that you come to the, you call the, the commission uh, and advise us of your uh, concern or the issues that you've just described, and then we interact with HPD to either toll the statute if that's what's required, or to those those penalties you described aren't triggered. I, I, okay, I have your commitment. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, thank you. My name is Ezzy. Uh, my family has been in the community for more than 25 years. We own a property, a small business. And we feel we're already over-regulated in New York here. High taxes. All these regulations. It sounds like you guys really look well nice, but we're going to have, you guys want to regulate us more. I just want to know if you guys actually force this on us, how, what is going to happen? When? When? Windows. Well, I said to, I've said to the gentleman in the back that it will probably be a calendaring uh, by the end of this year in the fall, sometime in the fall, and then it's a long process to go through to go through the work that others have alluded to here 
here, which is the number of buildings, the, uh, the in-depth research required in order to make the case so that, uh, that this is not a decisions that are made lightly. So it will be a, it will be a stretch out of the time frame that allows you to prepare for any concerns you might have. We hope that that will be, and it will be a transparent process subject to a public hearing or public hearings, and the opportunity for everybody to be heard and raise their issues, raise their concerns about the district as a whole by their individual properties. And I am not here to endorse this process designed to lead to uh, more striking intervention or over regulation by government. We're here to try to make a better city as a city with historic preservation and to make it as seamlessly um, it's more really okay well thank you thank you I'm on the board of a co-op at 280 West End Avenue and 73rd Street we're interred at Brownstone it was the home of Julia Tullifrey were a building that was the home of Julia Tuttle Grant, first lady of the United States and the widow of Ulysses S. Grant. We are very much in support of preservation. The issue that we're facing is we're about to start significant work to the exterior of the building. And while 90% of the building wants preservation and welcomes it, one of the board members is very vocal and against it. We've been trying to stall our work so that we could actually come under landmarks and have the benefit. Of, of these laws. What we're trying to find out and what would be useful for us to know is in the calendar process, what happens when this is calendared to things that are under consideration for exterior work? The process is that if the commission does go to calendar a historic district, then we communicate to the Department of Buildings that each building within that study area, the proposed district, is now calendared. The Department of Buildings puts a C as a calendar status in their database. And anytime you go to the Department of Buildings to get a DOB permit, they let you know because of the calendar status, you should you can go to the Landmarks Commission and get a, what's called a notice of review. It's not actually a permit because the building is not a landmark, but it's a letter where the commission staff reviews the work that's proposed and can sign off saying this has no negative impact on the historic fabric. This work would be appropriate for this proposed landmark building. If you choose not to get such a letter from the commission, then you have to wait the full 40 days that the Department of Buildings is legally allowed to review a permit application. So there is the commission, if your question is, can the commission stop you from doing the work while the status is on the calendar? The answer is no, there is a delay. However, we don't have that binding jurisdiction yet because the building is not yet on the calendar.